I'm currently making the long drive to the Cairngorms National Park in Scotland. The autumn colours are peaking right now and I'm desperate to get out there, immerse myself in nature and indulge in nothing other than a couple of days of autumnal landscape photography. Well that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Now I thought today's photography was going to be easy, it was going to be gifted to me. I mean look at all of this beautiful colour, but actually I was walking for miles and struggling to find any compositions to shoot, and I was actually starting to think I might come away empty handed. So I found a really interesting subject here, just in front of my camera you can see there's this tree which has broken clean in half and it seems to have broken over this old stone wall with all of the colour in the background and it's the first thing that's really grabbed my attention even though I've been out walking through the woods for a couple of hours and covered many miles. So when I was out before and I was walking it was I, I started to feel that sense of frustration come over me a little bit. I'm not going to say panic but that sense where you start becoming very aware that you've been out for a certain amount of time surrounded by beautiful things yet you've not found a single photograph <laughs> so when that happens usually the first thing I do is stop looking just focus on the walk because I think when you start looking it, you become a bit frantic and then you end up shooting anything that remotely resembles an image and then you get frustrated but you know a bit of patience a bit of perseverance continue walking and typically something will strike you a subject will strike you it's exactly what we're doing here and I'm gonna try this black mist filter by case filters just give it a go um, see if it's gonna soften this scene and make it even more ethereal than it already is. Now the scene may have been beautifully ethereal but I was having a couple of problems with my composition. One of the less serious problems was a bit of the stone wall creeping into the bottom of frame causing a bit of a distraction and the second more serious problem which would force my hand when it comes to aspect ratio was that bright white sky in the top right hand corner and the only way to eliminate this was by a 16 by 9 crop. My tripod is on very very unstable ground so I've set a 5 second timer. First shot of the day and feeling a lot better now than I was just before. Well I thought this image was okay, I like the subject and I like the colour but there's quite a lot going on especially with the wire fence in the background and a sense of busyness within the image. So with the day drawing to a close and light fading I decided to head back to the van, warm up dry off and recuperate for another day in the field. Oh, everything's really damp and it's going to get cold tonight so I'm going to put the diesel heater on. I'm also going to take all of my camera gear out and just lay it on the floor close to the heater so that that dries off because what I don't want to do is wake up tomorrow morning and have everything fogging up on me. Just put them there. Oh, it's kicking out lovely warm air now. One of the great things about having a van is, especially at this time of year when it's cold and damp outside, you whack on the diesel heater, man. It's just like cozy night. It doesn't get any cozier, I don't think. It's absolutely lovely. And all my gear is now drying off, although to be fair it wasn't that wet. It was just a fine mizzle, mizzle? A fine drizzly mist. Uh, but it's enough to just, you know, dampen everything up, so it'll dry off in no time. Well, I'm very happy that today's video sponsor is Beer52. So believe it or not, if you're based in the UK and over the age of 18, you can get some free beer this Christmas. I'm not even joking, it's Beer 52's awards season where they showcase the very best of craft beer from independent breweries all across the world. You can get a case of beers that you simply can't get anywhere else. All you've got to do is go to beer52.com forward slash Heaton, cover the postage of £5.95 and they'll send you a case just like this one of eight beers. So for those of you who do enjoy a nice beer, Beer 52 offer a very immersive beer discovery experience, I suppose you could say. In other words, you're gonna get a selection of beers that you can't get anywhere else, just like this one here. This is the one I've picked out, is an Omnipolo Outer Galactic Oat Pale Ale. 
So with beer 52, you can choose between light ales, dark ales, or you can mix them. So if you don't like dark ales, you can just select all lights. But what I actually found quite interesting is the magazine tells you all about the beers that you're drinking, which just, I don't know, it just adds, just adds to the overall experience. Now with all that being said and Christmas coming up, you can take advantage and get a free case of beer for Christmas. And if you don't like it and you don't want to continue, well you can just cancel or pause your subscription at any time. So if you want to give it a go, go to beer52.com forward slash Heaton and you can order your free case now. And that's beer52, so a five and a two dot com slash Heaton. Right, well I'm going to put all these beers away, finish this. Have a nice relaxing evening and see what photographic delights tomorrow morning brings. I'm hoping for a bit of mist and atmosphere, but, but we'll see. Well, good morning everybody. Had a, a pretty good night's sleep last night, although it did get quite cold, which got me excited when I woke up. <laughs> Not like that. Got me excited when I woke up because I thought there could be lots of mist and fog because it was so rainy last night. But when I got out of my van this morning, it was it was fairly bland. It was very similar to yesterday. I went for a walk down to a bridge not too far away from here where there's a beautiful view of the river, some waterfalls and beautiful autumn trees. But again, there was no light conditions where really just not ideal. So I, I took a couple of images, but truth be known, I couldn't really get going this morning. Yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a non-starter this morning, but that's okay. We've got all day, so it's not a problem. <laughs> I left that park up without a plan, not really knowing where to go or what to shoot, purely relying on my own intuition and something catching my eye. And it wasn't long before this usually innocuous woodland got my attention. Oh, man. And the reason it caught my eye is because it was engulfed in mist and fog. A recipe, surely, for success. It doesn't look that great if I'm honest, it's just a plantation woodland, but of course with the mist and the fog that really can transform the most mundane of subjects into something quite special. I keep this calendar in my van uh, so that I can promote my calendar in these videos and I always forget and now look at the state of it, <laughs> it's all crumpled and bent as it's been shoved underneath bags and uh, down my passenger footwell and everything, but yes there you go 2024 calendar available now on my website. 12 images taken in the past year or so. Each image contains a QR code where you can scan the QR code and then you can watch the video. There we go. <laughs> Plug done. So this is exactly what I was looking for. A splash of colour in this uniformed plantation woodland with the mist and the fog. It's fantastic because your eye is drawn to the colour and it's set so nicely against uniform pine trees, just like you can see behind me, that yellow birch tree there with the beautiful mist and fog. But actually from here, it's not working. It's there's, there's the problem with this kind of photography in plantation woodland is whilst in one way it's great because it's uniform and orderly, which I quite like with my images, you know, symmetrical and all that, but there's so many trees, it's very difficult to get a clean composition, so I think I need to move down a bit. A great tip when working in locations like this is take your camera off your tripod. <laughs> Trying to walk around and finesse a composition in a busy woodland on your tripod is just impossible. Handheld, walk around, wait till everything clicks, and then you're good to go. So I've only moved a few meters from where I first set up the tripod, but it's massively improved my composition, mainly because I've been able to make use of this open area in front of the main subject, the yellow tree. And what that means is all of the trees in shot, you can see the base of the trees. All right, so I am manually focusing my lens. I don't really like using autofocus in a busy, chaotic woodland. It's so easy for it to just miss and jump to a tree behind your subject. I'm at f5.6, square composition. And it's just, it's for, for such a chaotic, busy environment, this composition just feels so clean. So I'll get this shot 
and then we'll move on. It's amazing how quickly things change. I had a walk around, couldn't really find a subject that was better or different enough to the one I just shot. And then, just in a matter of seconds, blue sky is beginning to open up above us and the mist is more or less gone, as you can see there behind me. So I think we'll head back to the van, move on, and uh, yeah, carry on with our day of photography. Carry on we shall, and it's not long before something else catches my eye, but this time it's not a plantation woodland, or in fact a subject of any kind. It was a footpath and a signpost to a duck pond that would lead me to capture an image that's nothing at all to do with a duck pond. So I have arrived at the aforementioned duck pond, and I'll have to be honest with you, I was quite disappointed when I got here. It um, doesn't feel as remote and wildernessy as I would like. There's a few cottages directly opposite the pond. There's a big car park, which I clearly missed up there because I hiked here, and there's lots of people coming back and forth. There's power lines, and I was like, oh, what a shame. But then it just took a minute. I spotted way off 400 mil in the distance, mist rolling through beautifully vibrant autumnal trees with a little bit of light just lifting them. Uh, so I've turned my attention this way to capture a beautiful abstract of nature trees on a hillside fading into mist. This is a great example of looking at the bigger landscape in more detail and then using a long lens to pick out small scenes within that landscape. Well, I'd say that duck pond was a worthwhile stop, even though it wasn't quite as good as I expected. And we still have the entire afternoon, so it's onwards to find more locations. So you might be curious where I'm going to and uh, where I get my information. Well, it's there's no big secret. What I do is when I come to an area that I've never been to before, I go onto Google and I just search for walks in the area. So top 10 walks or top 10 hikes or woodland walks or riverside walks. And you get loads of them, you get tons, and then you just look at them all, you see which ones have a good diverse, a good diversity of landscape, and then go and explore. There's really nothing to it, no rocket science at all. Yeah, it's not rocket science to find a good location to shoot, but do you know what doesn't help? Heavy, miserable, consistent rain. It's absolutely chucking it down. I mean, I was driving and it started to rain, so I thought I'll just drive a bit further, looking for somewhere to stop someone that had potential and the rain got heavier and heavier. But I have pulled into a location that looks promising and the thing is with weather, right, as, as miserable as it is when you get bad weather, if you can put up with it and you're in the right type of environment, then there are definitely images to be had. Yeah, it's really coming down. I'm going fully waterproofs, jacket and trousers. Unfortunately, I didn't bring my umbrella, but you know, I struggle to carry an umbrella, video tripod, and all my camera gear. Love the tailgate though. Thank God for a tailgate. Yeah, good one, Tom, good one. Yeah, that tailgate's not gonna save you from the absolute soaking that you and your cameras are about to receive. Rest in peace, Fuji X-T4. So it'd be really good to finish today's video with a nice image. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed that last one with the 400 mil and the cloud, uh, the mist rolling through the trees. But I always want to finish on a high because I've probably got about an hour and a half of usable light left. So let's finish on a high. Look at this though, look. Look at the colour. That colour is incredible. For this next image, I took the tactical decision to record all of my dialogue in voiceover form. And as you can see, I'm gesturing to my lens to let you know that I'm using a super wide 14 to 30 mil for this next shot. And the reason for this is because that water was thundering down the river. And as you can see from this clip, 
Well, it would be absolutely pointless in me trying to narrate my way through an image with that racket in the background. I could barely hear myself think. And in case you missed it, that was a polarizing filter I popped onto my lens. I'm now going to gesture my way through the composition, and as you can see, I'm gesturing quite heavily towards this rock, which is my main foreground element. The scene then leads you through to three more rocks in the midground, which I am now very enthusiastically pointing to. But wait, wait, there's more. All of these rocks and foreground and midground are supported by the vast array of autumn colour in the background. And actually this is quite a nice composition. Now as you can see here I've gone for a one-to-one -one square crop and I'm doing a rudimentary focus stack by tapping on the foreground to focus, the midground and of course the background. But actually the final image required no focus stacking as that lens was sharp enough at 14mm. Wow, <laughs> uh, it's difficult not to shoot this when you walk past it. These falls are incredible and there's so much mist in the air and there's no wind, it's just, oh, yes, get a shot of this. Why not, seeing as we're here, there's even a perfect viewpoint just for the tripod, look at that. <laughs> right, so we're just gonna keep this nice and simple square composition, waterfall, centrally framed by beautiful colour, everything softened by the mist. I'm just going to have a look and see what effect the polarizer has, um, but it, it may not be worthwhile. Okay, it does offer quite a bit of richness to the colour, so we'll keep that on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on the mist filter as well, the black mist. don't know why I'm showing it here, you can't see it. I think that's the idea, you can't see it. I'll tell you, I'm also going to have to dig out a lens cloth and Everything is just filthy and wet. Very subtle, this mist filter, very subtle, but I think on a day like today, it's gonna help enhance everything. All right, well, that was a, a lovely little quick shot. Gifted to me on a plate, if I'm honest with you, but you know, I'll take it, because I am soaking wet, and as you can probably tell, it's getting very dark very quickly. So I need to get out of here. I think it's going to be a good half hour walk back to the van. And ee, I don't have a head torch with me. That's my mistake. So uh, yeah, this is a lovely little image. Of. Nice and simple, straightforward, and yeah, this is lovely. Been another wet one. Um, you can see my flashing microphone here because the rain has killed this camera dead. You can tell I'll switch to the audio. Listen. Oh, oh it's just terrible. So we're recording on this. And hopefully it sounds okay. We are getting very close, alarmingly close to Christmas. Uh, so if you're watching this, or even better, if you're not really watching this, you're just in the room with your partner who is watching this. Well, I've got some Christmas ideas for you. I've got two books available and a calendar. So that may, might make for a nice gift for the person who's watching this video. Just, just log that again on the website, thomasheaton.co.uk. Very easy to remember, fast shipping. It'll be nice and stress-free way of getting a present to your partner, right? There we go, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all next week. Cheers, bye, 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 bye. <laughs>